Hello. This is an introduction to Burbis Dutch, a Creole language based on Dutch, which used to be spoken in Burbis in Guyana. I started learning Burbis Dutch in 2006, and in theory I speak it somewhat, but I have uh, nobody to speak it with. But I'm working on its revival. So I hope uh, this soon will change. I start with telling you what the language is like. It well, it's a radical Creole. It that means it's a Creole language which is very different from the language where it came from. It has uh, many vowels for. It is for for those who don't know so many languages I can say in this respect it is similar to Italian or you can also say Spanish the most similar it is to Surinamese Creoles, especially to Surinam Tongo, but as I said, this is a Dutch Creole, and Surinam Tongo is an English Creole, but with a strong Dutch influence. Apart from the source of the vocabulary, the most uh, striking difference for me is uh, that in Sanang Tongo there are many O's and in Burbis Dutch there are many U's. Both are rather easy languages but Burbis Dutch is not so well documented but this should not be that much of a problem because when reviving a language we always have to make new words and we know from the words we have this is like well counting compounds and everything we have about 2000 words but single words it may be just a few hundred but we know the sound changes and can make new words especially from Dutch so we we know that Dutch I J which is pronounced A for the most part is E in Berbis Dutch. This is because Berbis Dutch is based on the Zealandic dialect of Dutch, which kept the old E sound. 
which um, some Germanic languages still have. I am happy to speak uh, an Alemannic dialect which still has the long E where standard German has I. This is a reason why I like the Dutch Creoles. I like Berbis Dutch and Skepi Dutch and Neherhollands. That oh, I have to say, Neherhollands is a Dutch Creole language with which was spoken on the Virgin Islands and I am also working on the rival of revival of this Scapy Dutch or Esequibo Dutch is much harder to revive than the other two because we only have a word list and very few sentences but we can say a, a bit about the sounds so we can use Burbis Dutch words or Neherhollands words to make new ones here. But I would have to look into it more closely. It is uh, sometimes not from the word list you sometimes don't know if you have a separate vowel or you had to just have an alternative pronunciation of the same vowel. So, so sometimes you would have to make good guesses And there was a study on comparative study between those three Dutch Creoles and they found out that from the words Scapy Dutch was closer to to Neherhollands than to Perbistach. This means from the words which came into the language and then were changed. Because sometimes Perbistach has totally different words with the same meaning, even though they are from Dutch. But Babystach has many words from other languages. Especially from Kalabadi, which is an African language spoken in in Nigeria. still spoken there and it, it is not there's a dialect cluster there are Ija languages and the one that 
resembles the the Ija content of Burbistach the most is Kalabadi. But there, there is a meanwhile Kalabadi had a sound change to from T to S in certain positions which is not found in Burbistach. We don't know the detail of the origin of Burbistach, but it is most likely that the slaves which were brought to the new colony of Burbis where, where Kal Kalabari speaking people and and that their first at first were no other slaves and there's one theory that Kalabadi was spoken for a long time and and was used along with a Dutch pigeon so a pigeon is similar to a Creole language but only for second language learners which they they use like an auxiliary language to speak to people who don't have the same mother tongue without having to learn each other's language and that uh, Burbistach came into being as a mixture of Guyanese or Burbis Kalabari and the also the local Zealandic Dutch the pigeon the pigeon that's what that's what this theory is but we we don't know for sure we we have a very high african content but um, the dialects that we know are from Bo Boviandos and they were for the most part of, of um, well, I, so they, they were mixed from mixed descendants but more Arawak more on the Arawak side and uh, there were they it used to be spoken by black creoles and and they probably probably had even more African words and the language which we have which Sylvia Kauenberg has in her grammar is um, has many many Amerindian words and most of them are Arawak
baby starch is also a bit unusual that African words are missing in areas where one would expect African words like material culture and it's often Arawak so it is here it is all over well everything and what I think is that it probably it was uh, lost in some areas of the language. We can look at Guyanese Creole languages or other other deep Creoles and and look there where where the African words are. The so I there there was a study on African words in in Creole languages and it used them. Um, oh, the, the study wasn't mainly about this, but it used St. Kitts Creole. Maybe St. Kitts Creole has more African words or has many African words. And mm, Jamaican has. Uh, has also has deep creole versions we could also look at this it, this is also about reconstruction so if a if a language which has a similar history and a similar culture has a cer certain words from an African origin then Babistach could have had the same it is hard to find out um, each or word which was used at this time it is not not so important there would often these words would not be everyday words so something well some you know animals and plants from the bush St still important to the language all over but if if you speak it you don't necessarily need it and you can still uh, use Arabic uh, words but I I wanted to talk a bit about what the yes the more African dialects used to be like or could have been like now a bit more about the language itself I already mentioned the vowels. We often have uh, an added final vowel. I give an example which 
I have already given in the German introduction. It is Buku. So this is Book. Also in Sranang Dongo they say this, but uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce this pronounce this right. So it is just book, the Dutch, not the English word, and then anu after it, book u. So that the word can end in a vowel. And there is a yeah a bit of vowel harmony in this and also assimilation to the consonants so it depends on what there was before in the word I I know many of the rules for this and New words can be made if uh, the right ones are picked. There are words which are just not likely to have been in the language. But we we know er sorry all early early Dutch Creole. Oh no, oh, early English Creole <laughs> from from Suriname and here it is easy to identify early words because for two reasons early words are in the in the early dictionaries and or court acts also and you have there the oldest words are from English if you have old English words then they are early words in the language and if in Burbistach something something is missing there is if there is a word no word for something that has an early word in the Surinamese Creoles then then it is a bit more likely that there used to be such a word. When they had it, it was probably an important one. There are also Dutch words in Surinamese Creoles which were quite early they would also be important and we would not have to change them much because the the sound changes are very very similar in Dutch Creole and in English Creole If you have a diphthong, if you had this is for the most part it is yeah all right I say I just mentioned all of them. We have all right we we have a vowel 
and then we have e or u we don't have example of all of which i'm explaining but we have the word for wood is you know not the net not not the forest just wood like you know you make a table of it is how to in Dutch this is Haut and you see you have the second vowel of the diphthong copied and here it's always like this there are rules that after an F or a B you also for after a P but not always you have um, an U but but the rule with the diphthong is the stronger one so it will win when you would have both uh, we have the Dutch word begins with sh that that is spelled s c h then you have sk so s k and you have this in all dutch creoles and in afrikaans but there are exceptions i don't know where they are from probably a, a difference in the source language so the word for school is is shulu you would expect it to be wi with sk but maybe it it was from german or a different dutch dialect i have to see how late it is Oh, I've been talking a long time. But a, maybe a bit, a bit more, some more examples. You, you have um, two words for, for and like in many creoles so often if you connect two words you say mette and if you connect two sentences it is an so mette is from met yeah it's, that's with and an is from n that's end and you have this is something the following is something that usually creole languages don't have but you have a, a plural ending but it is not used all the time if you know that you are 
talking of more than one thing or the others know then you don't have to use the plural the full form is apu but you you often say just a or up if you say yelma this is woman and you want to stress that is more than one you can say yelma pu the this a uh, is um is a special sound of burbistach you produce it when say you say an e but you drag your tongue a bit back if if you can't say this but give it a try you can just say a eh. I like him better or s some something. The the other one is is e. That's the the plain one. I mark it with um, oh. I don't know what this that is in English. In French, accent grave. And I also mark stress. And if um, if an e is stressed, I I use a hat check. That's um, you know. Or should I make it so <laughs> from the other side because you know. You are watching me, and then I would have to turn this over. So to imitate the shape of both accents, because the, this one is where I mark the stress of the word, and this is the sound. You might not be able to type this. Uh. Yes, it. Their origin is probably in the seventeenth century, and yes, well, there m might be some people who still know how to speak it or know a bit how to speak it but it stopped being a community language by the middle of the 20th century but if you want to learn it i i would be very glad to teach you what i can and we can have regular conversations I would be most happy for participants from from Guyana but I'm not picky you can be from everyone everywhere all over the world no problem But it is uh, because of the people of Guyana I make this in English. And we know from historical records that Dutch Creole was used as a second language 
by Amerindians even uh, close to the border to Venezuela. So it was widely spoken and Ian Robertson or Robson had a theory that there even was um, a Dutch Creole version in in Demerara but I don't know if he found something out it was very long I, I'm even planning on a second video on this I I hope you learned a lot and yes see you